common malware. So here's a bunch of uh, names of some common malware. These are all modern. So the Zeus family, this is how it's spelled. Uh, 2.8 leaked, game over, direwolf, current. Direwolf is a current version of Zeus. Game over is, is a current version as well. Many variants since the source was leaked and more and more. So Zeus is around to stay. It's really nasty keylogger. We talked about it previously. Um, the crypto locker, that's the one that um, encrypts your systems and asks you for payment to get your key. And you have like two weeks and then it just wipes, it deletes all the data that it's encrypted. Um, Android, and, Android and Tetis is another one. So Android and Tetis is one of the malware that it will infect Android. Uh, Stage Fright N, Phobus.A is also for Android. So these are just some modern versions. Um, obfuscating malware. So you want to break the Trojan into multiple smaller files and zip the individual pieces. It's impractical to rebuild on the host without a rootkit installed. So what does that mean? So if you're going to obfuscate malware, you want to break it up into multiple smaller files. So what does that do? It changes the signature that the, uh, the signature analyzers are looking for. So your malware is going to take flight and it hits the egress point of your network. So it's coming from the internet over to your LAN. So it's going to hit the uh, appliances, your secu security appliances that are chained together. You may have three or four, you may just have one. You might not have any, but most of the time people will check it as it crosses the network. So as it comes into your network, it's being checked for signatures. So they break them into small pieces. And then two pieces might create one half of the file and then two pieces create the other half of the file. And then the malware will assemble those two halves. So as far as the security appliance thinks, it just reassembled the file and the signature didn't match. That's all it's looking for. So it lets it go. So there's some other ones that use sandboxing technology. And what sandboxing technology is, is it'll actually take the file that it recreated and go detonate it or load it into a little virtual appliance. And then it'll look for things that it's doing. Did it write to the registry? Did it try to install something else? Did it reach out to the internet? What, what IP or URL did it use? So they kind of heuristically check it to see if its behavior is good or is it likely bad. So that's what sandboxing is. Um, so then as the pieces are brought down and dropped on the system, then the rootkit goes to work and puts them back together and then detonates the malware. So this is a modern technique. So we want to change uh, the content of the Trojan using hex editor and thus the checksums will be different. So that's likely to work, but uh, we talked about some of the malware where some of the signature pieces don't always change. So one half may change, but the other half may not. So in that case, if you change the wrong piece, you, you have to know what you're going to change, right? So it just, it just depends on whether or not that'll get caught or not. But just know that if you change uh, the content using a hex editor, the signature will be incredibly different. So the last one is encrypt and encode the Trojan using multiple hash algorithms. So you're not going to pull a hash of the file. You're going to actually use the algorithm to change the actual file. So that's what they're doing uh, with those. So how do you remain current in this industry? Um, there's networks of friends that you can build um, and then just networks of cons that you can attend and things like that to constantly see what's changing, what's going on. Uh, so I pulled up a list of cons that you can take a look at and try and stay current with. Uh, the, none of the information on this slide is in the test, but I just thought I would pass it along. So there's ShmooCon, RSA, this is for C-level people, um, CISOs, uh, chief security officers, etc. cetera. Black Hat, it's mostly government employees. DEF CON, everyone goes to DEF CON. Uh, Derby CON, uh, Pump CON, B-Sides, these are all over the world in every major city. There's a B-Sides website and it lists all of the B-Side conferences. That's a great place to start. There's a ton more. And then some daily reading websites are like Packet Storm Security, Dark Reading, BlackHatLibrary.net, DataBreachToday.com, ThreatPost, Attack Research, Malwarebytes.org, Cyberpedia.india, it's a great informational website. GhettoForensics.com, SecurityGuru.com, Liquid Matrix, tons more. This will just give you a good start. One more thing I want to say about this. Um, if you're getting into malware, 
you also need to read the uh, CVE website. So I didn't list those on here. I kind of is kind of a given. So you want to sign up for those and just get daily dumps of what new CVEs are coming out and where those attack vectors are coming from and just kind of make a matrix to your org and see if you're vulnerable to any of these things. A feedback loop. Um, data from a sensor is used to make decisions for some period of time. So time periods of decision making are context dependent. So what does that mean? So you have a process that's running and then that process uh, is being monitored by something else. So that could be your sensor. It could be a computer watching a network or something like that. Um, you could have a honeypot out there that's receiving data and you have something kind of watching that data and then all of a sudden something happens and you need to alarm or alert the SOC team, uh, Security Operations Center is a SOC team, SOC, and that's your first, um, first person or team to handle any events that need to be taken care of is usually directed to a SOC. If you don't have a SOC, you'll have an information security team and uh, one of the members of that will receive the alerts on the appliances and respond accordingly. So, but just know that a feedback loop for the test is data from a sensor is used to make uh, decisions for some period of time. And how, whatever that period of time is kind of just depends on what you're looking at. So, so acceptance, <clears throat> a false acceptance rate, FAR. This is an acronym that they'll use on the test. Uh, you'll also see this a lot for the CISSP exam. Uh, you might as well learn it now because you're going to need it for this one as well. So FAR is a false acceptance rate. Mm -hmm.